Okay, so I'm going to do this video. So it was right there, by the way. <laughs> I told her I was going to do this video. And because uh, I'm in the living room. And so she said, uh, if I sit here, is it okay? Can you see me? I said, no. So then I... She's so pretty. 13. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. But anyway, stop with the... Blah, blah, blah. I can't talk now. That's not what this video is about. Um, it is about someone's question with respect to Tacoma and its growth. I did a video talking about 2040, 2050, they're saying the city will grow by an additional 147,000 people. Most of those people are going to live in what's called the downtown regional center. If you don't know where that is, take the Link Light Rail train and follow its complete route from start to finish, and that is the Downtown Regional Center. It starts in the Dome District, includes the Brewery District, the Downtown Central Business District, it includes the Waterfront Stadium District, it includes um, Hillside as well as Hilltop, but there may be a few other little odds and end areas in there, St. Helens, all that. But anyway, all of that is the downtown regional center. As of today, it's around 15,000 people that live there. That number bounces constantly because every time a new apartment building is completed and every time people move into those large spaces, um, the population goes up quite a bit. So it is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 or so uh, people that actually live there. The question was, if all those people are going to move there, the city is going to be in a difficult situation because there's no infrastructure to support that extra added number of people. And I absolutely do agree with that. I think part of Seattle's problem in terms of just congestion is due to that. There was no plans in place really to support a city that developed and that big. And back in the day, whenever the citizens had a chance to vote for a subway system that would have connected this whole area, they voted against it, which was a foolish thing to do because now, some 50 years later, we're struggling to catch up. And so the only other city I think that has a large rail building process right now is Los Angeles. I don't know if they're number one and we're number two or vice versa, but when it comes to spending billions of dollars on light rail and rail, uh, it is Los Angeles and the Seattle region because both are growing so quickly. LA makes sense. They grow all the time. The Seattle region is growing quite fast and not all that growth is happening up in Seattle and Bellevue. The reason why is because a, it's it's kind of this, and I'm not trying to take a crap on either city, right? But I think that it's A, overpriced, and I think that in the case of Bellevue, it just doesn't have any culture. You know, they can't even get their museum, their art museum, to really function, right? There's no, there's no sense of true culture and identity. They're more or less kind of Seattle East right? They're viewed by some as kind of like a bedroom community. An edge city is what some of the more professionals will call it. And so it just doesn't really have its own thing. Tacoma, on the other hand, has all of those things. So it has a strong culture, uh, even though some of that's passive aggressive. I did that video talking about that. But beyond that, it has its own arts and culture scene. It has, you know, a lot of great parks here. Schools are decent. Some of them are better than others. Um, you know, it has a zoo. You know, it has, you know, like an opera, a symphony, and all those things. Things that you would normally see in a much bigger city, we have them here. Most cities don't have a, you know, of this size. This close to a big city don't have their own port. They don't have their own light rail system. They don't have, you know, uh, as I mentioned, a zoo. They don't have two aquariums. Some cities, even including Seattle, only has one. We have two right there in the zoo. You pay for your zoo membership, you get access to both. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate Metro Parks because Metro Parks, if we did not have Metro Parks, and we just relied on the city's public works department, the park system here would be garbage. 
I'm sorry to say it, but it would. I mean, if you look at the two pocket parks that are downtown that the public works is over, it's just not right off of Pack Avenue. Uh, they're in disrepair. Fountains stay broken. Nobody repairs them. It, 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 it's unfortunate because if you look, and I'll talk about more of the infrastructure that's needed, but let's talk about the current infrastructure that's there. The people who left Tacoma, meaning leadership, they left a Tacoma that was being reborn, right? It was a city at one point in time was the focus city of the entire state. It was the city. And then the gold rush happened and Seattle took it, right? We were a rail town and Seattle took it because of gold mining. And it just continued and continued and continued. And then the rail line went all the way up there. So then it kind of, people were like, eh, Tacoma. And it's been that way ever since, right? At one point in time, we were bigger than Seattle. And then they got their ride and just took off, rocketed. And so Tacoma has been trying to figure out its own, uh, its own niche ever since and or niche however you want to say it but it it to me is a arts and culture city it just is i mean our museum campus is the densest museum campus in the entire state you know i talked about our transit uh system we have the most connection points and density of transit options that, than any other city in the pacific northwest i believe i think we outpace portland i know we do seattle in Bellevue, of course. But I think we outdo Portland when it comes to the amount of density and options. Now, of course, their MAC system beats everything that we have here for now. But yeah, I mean, Tacoma punches above its weight and that is a massive lure because not only do you have all the city stuff, but you also have jobs that pay fairly well. It's been a while for us to try to gain jobs, but that is starting to take off quite a bit. And you have, like I mentioned before, the Puyallup Tribe of Indians, they bought a, or not bought out, but they heavily invested in a liquid battery company that's gonna be manufacturing the batteries here. Now that's a small population of people to start out with. It's not gonna be like in Bowling Green, Kentucky where this Japanese battery factory came in and they're gonna employ 2000 people. I don't imagine that's what's going to happen here, but we constantly create a lot of good paying jobs few years ago, jobs would pay piss poor. Now they're paying a lot better, right? So our cost of living down here, when you add up like fuel and all this other stuff, is very similar to Seattle. The only difference is housing cost. Now, when you look at the rest of the country, people look at Tacoma and they're like, dang, it's expensive. But it's a lot more tolerable than say Seattle. So that adds to the amount of people that want to move here. A lot of them are coming from Seattle. We have some coming from California and other parts of the country who are like, I definitely want to move there. But to answer that question about infrastructure, I think there's a lot of things that are actually happening at the same time. One, the Tacoma Link Light Rail, that extension was great because it connected the hill, the medical mile, which is hilltop, parts of hillside, it connected stadium district, central business district, the university campus, um, and the museum campus, it connected all that to the dome district. So all those things are connected. That allows for a very dense downtown. Now, some people may not think so, but literally having a, a train system that's within a 15 minute walk is a big deal, right? Um, because then you're able to go wherever you got to go and it's easy to connect. So because of that, you're going to see a much denser downtown campus because that's the only place where we can put a lot of that density. And to supplement the train system, buses can do a lot. So buses can then coordinate better than what we have right now. They could coordinate better in terms of downtown. So basically those buses never really leave the downtown regional center, but they act as a as a short stop, right? So that you're not having to walk forever to get to a train station. You at least have bus stops that can take you close enough to where you can go wherever you got to go and do what you got to do. To be honest with you, that is an easy thing to do. 
right? Uh, but downtown is starting to spill over its banks a little bit, meaning that it's starting to go more into the port area. And I think that what you're going to probably see in the, in the near future, meaning probably before 2030, is more construction on the other side. So right there, and I don't know the name of the thing, but right there where that big metal bridge is, I forget the name of the bridge, right downtown, it's the 9th Street Bridge, but it's called something else. Um, the school system, as well as the port, they're building two large buildings right there, right? The goal is to, again, build on the talent that we have. And if you start young with young people in high school, teach them all about what the port is, jobs within the port that we feel that we have and port jobs pay great so that's the other thing jobs at that port pay very good very 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 competitive but they pay very very good so it's kind of this balance of saying let's actually have about 600 students that can go to this every year and study at this at this new high school right downtown and that is a good thing. But I think what you're going to start seeing is more development over there. If I have 600 students plus however many port employees that work in that headquarters, because the Port of Tacoma's headquarters are going to be right there. Then you have other small techie companies that are over there doing a lot of different things. It makes sense to start building apartment buildings on that in that area. If you look at that area right now, it's just a bunch of mangled, disgusting old warehouses and buildings of yesteryear, back when we were a city that did a lot of the a lot of the damage on the waterfront. These were warehouses, some light manufacturing. Those old buildings are pretty much you can't use them anymore, right? There's more lead paint probably in them than not. So it's just easier to knock them down and build something new. So I do see that. Now, I don't think you're going to see a lot of heavy manufacturing that close to the water like that. That's kind of something that we've learned, hopefully, not to do anymore. But I do think you're going to start seeing more things like what I had mentioned um, in terms of housing, some retail, because, again, there's a large number of students and there's not a lot of places to eat. So they would have to cross the bridge in order to go get something to eat downtown, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I do think you're going to probably see more attention over there in terms of amenities. It's just, you, it, it has to happen. Um, but that's part of it. I think that building more bus routes, express bus lines, to me, downtown, and you know, I mentioned in the video that if, if we do have a strong mayor, that I would run for office. I do think that. They're trying to do a hybrid system where they have a, um, you have a mayor, but it's a hybrid system where you don't have a city manager necessarily, but you have someone that manages the operations of the city. So then that's where you get your professional. People here for some reason are afraid. We can elect people to be a president. You don't have to have any intelligence to be a president of the United States. You can be a criminal and a thug and you can still be the president of the United States. But yet for some reason to run a city that has 225,000 people in it, people are scared to elect people to be a full on mayor. Even though a lot of other cities have done this very well, successfully, probably for over a hundred years, easily. I'm just gonna say, cause I'm sure it's much longer. I'm just gonna say for the last hundred years or so, We've done that very well in multiple cities in this country, but for some reason here, people are afraid that if you elect someone to be mayor, they're probably not going to know what they're doing. It's silly to me, right? It's silly. But at any rate, if I were to be a mayor of this city, I think that downtown would be a heavy, heavy focus. It's not to say neglect the rest of the city, but I think that bite-sized pieces. One, downtown needs to have an, uh, uh, you know, a north to south and east to west uh, express bus line, right? People say, well, you have the streetcar. You do. You do have the light rail line that runs technically, what is that, north to south kind of, and a little bit east to west. You do have that, right? But Tacoma is very hilly downtown. It's very hilly. 
So to really, if you were at Bates Technical College and you wanted to go down to the new to, uh, Port of Tacoma headquarters, it's going to be hard unless you basically, you know, s put some wheels on and just haul ass down the hill. <laughs> there's no way to get there, right? So there, there, there's... There needs to be more connections to the port, which is a huge major um, employment center for us. And it needs to connect a lot of our educational cultural institutions. I also think places like Tacoma Avenue, where all of the buildings are being built, residential buildings, that is where I would have that kind of north to south, if I'm doing this wrong or right, but basically, it would be that thoroughfare. Why? Because that's where all of the big apartment buildings are going. Not all, but a big chunk of them are going. So in order to make that much more of a walkable, friendlier area where people don't have to fret about wondering where to park, because again, developers don't have to put parking in those buildings because it's downtown the city should work with Pierce Transit to say, create a bus line, and it doesn't have to be a gigantic bus, but create an express line that goes down Tacoma Avenue and that goes into Old Town or wherever it needs to go and connect it with the light rail system, right? In addition to bringing it even, just make a full loop within downtown, but connect it along the light rail system so therefore you have a lot of seamless connectivity, right? And I would do that with the other route that goes east to west. Downtown's laid weird in terms of directions, but that's what I would do, right? So connect the port all the way to Bates Technical and go up to the armory. And then I would basically go along Tacoma Avenue and create just loops, right? Where they just, there's a loop here, there's a loop here. And they intersect with the light rail system. That is smart development because then folks will say, I have an easier way of getting to where I gotta go to, grocery stores, hospitals, clinics, places to eat, things to do, because it's all seamlessly connected. I think that bike trails should be built. If you go to Seattle, you can see them everywhere. Here, not so much. You'll see a little bit of paint here, but that's it. <laughs> There's no true connectivity yet. But, and that's something that's easy to do, right? It's just paint. And we have enough space in certain areas to where they can do that along streets, where they can do that for a while. But I think having true bicycle lanes downtown and not only in downtown, but in a lot of our neighborhoods and communities makes a lot of sense. I think that when you're talking outside of downtown, you're going to start seeing a lot more development. Pacific Avenue is a good example. It is the area that has the community line express bus service. Um, and it is our first kind of step into having BRT. Even though it's not a true BRT, they've acknowledged it's not BRT. The funding for BRT would be a little bit too much. And to be honest with you, I think that Pierce Transit bit off way too much more than it could chew. It should have focused exclusively on Tacoma only, in my opinion. And it should have went to our city limits all the way to downtown. That should have been phase one. Phase two should have connected basically from there all the way to Parkland. Phase three should have been the rest of Parkland. And I think it shouldn't have taken forever to do. I think that it's a matter of saying this is how we're working on the segments that we're working on. To me, that would make a lot better sense than trying to do the whole massive route, which would require a lot of construction along that entire route, moving utility lines and all that stuff. And utilities, it was it's expensive. Now, the other option is the express bus line. And to be honest with you, I would rather have that than BRT. Why? It's simple. I think what they should do is completely have a, a totally different bus design for the express bus system. That's the first thing, because you can't tell a regular bus from the express bus. Second thing is it should have a little bit different color scheme again, so you can have differentiation because people can't tell what the hell they're stepping on. 
right? Until they see it up close and then it's like, oh, I see. I looked at the color scheme, I went by and did video of it and I can't tell the difference too much. But I think that we should have similar when you go up to Seattle, you can tell the rapid ride lines versus just the King County buses. They look different. One's green and yellow, orangish. The other is red and orangish, right? So you know the difference and the buses look different. That's how you do it. Because people can easily say, yep, I see it. Here, they're just trying to, to piecemeal and do it the cheap slumlord way. And that's just not how it works. But I think that having multiple express bus lines connecting downtown to Spanaway, then connecting all the way to Puyallup and University Place, I think that should be an express line. Connecting the mall to downtown should be an express line. I think that those are starts because then you have, you know, basically it's not like the old school bus system that we have where it stops every three seconds. This is, you know, maybe it's a stop every, you know, three blocks, four blocks, right? And so therefore it's, it's less stops that you have to deal with. And that encourages more people to walk. So to answer your question, we're going to become more denser. It just, it is what it is. But I think we have to be creative with the infrastructure that we have, the constraints that we have. We can't make the roads wider. We can't double deck them. We can't do any of those things. But we can use our transportation tools to maximize what we have. And I think it's a close collaboration between the city and planners, as well as Pierce Transit and Sound Transit to see if there's other things that we can do, maybe jointly, that can enhance and improve the transportation system down here to make way for all this growth and development. Again, there's a lot of projects that are wrapping up right now downtown. You're going to see downtown population bump. So this time next year, you're going to see a huge difference in terms of the number. I did videos before talking about in 24, you're going to see a lot of that. Well, 24 is here, and a lot of those buildings, like, for example, Trent Development, they developed the Rook downtown. That's been open now. People are moving in. That's a large building that has 300 and something apartments available. If you do the multiplier, you're talking 700 people, right in just those two buildings, 700 people, potentially. That's a huge number of people to bring into a downtown that didn't exist before. And that's just one project. Many others are wrapping up and completing. Some have already finished. Others are not too far behind. But I think that once the money to, to, to borrow becomes a lot better and easier, like it was before, you're going to see a lot more development take off because we have to. We're in a bad situation. I think COVID has set everything back. I think that probably next year, you will start to see where things start to straighten out again as far as borrowing money and it won't be so difficult uh, but that's a long time to wait and that's a lot of back fog uh, keep in mind too there's all these publications talking about Tacoma is the best place to live Tacoma, Tacoma has a great lifestyle Tacoma this Tacoma that you see that it's one of the top places that people look for when they're looking out west to rent um, if you go to apartments.com there's stuff on that niche.com they rank Tacoma very high in a lot of areas. So those types of rankings, also the Today Show, these are things that create a lot of attention for Tacoma. All those job markets, all the things that are happening. And the fact that you can live in, not, in a city that's not so dense, like Seattle, not crazy expensive like those places, but you still have access to all the beauty and all the, the cultural amenities that you would like. But anyhow, tell me what your thoughts are. And until next time, I will see you. Take care. You got to say bye, Sonzo?